Welcome to Tokyo Disneyland. This is our list of things you definitely should wait for or things you could walk on past. We came at the end of September, early October during the 40th anniversary celebration and in the midst of Halloween. For a reference, my name is Paul. This is my twin brother, Luke, and our friend Tracy, who is visiting Japan with us. Also, Luke and I are identical twins and people in Japan love that. The first thing we noticed when entering Tokyo Disneyland was just how beautiful these parks are. We went through security, which was fast and efficient. You were then ushered into this beautiful world bazaar that has a covered shokengui. I don't think I'm saying that. Shotengui. I don't know how to say it, but it's so beautiful and it's very traditional for a commercial market in Japan. I think overall, these parks excel at the atmosphere that they bring. The streets here are very large. They have big parades that come through three times a day, and the streets accommodate for big parade floats while also providing large walkways. These walkways are not only helpful for parades and for people sitting waiting for parades, but also to accommodate the masses that are walking through this park. It never feels crowded. It feels, in fact, quite empty. Not bad empty, but like, you can breathe. The only time that it does feel a little bit crowded is when a parade is going through and you're trying to get around the parade. Although the walkways are very large, so many people watch the parades, it does tend to stop traffic. This park is largely themed after Disneyland in California, just blown up a whole lot bigger. And from our perspective, there is seemingly no budget cuts in this park. It is immaculate. For example, this is an area of Adventureland that has no purpose other than providing theming for the area and a little bit of extra seating for a counter service restaurant. That's another thing. There's a lot of benches everywhere. They just expect you to sit and enjoy the park and I like that a lot. From the moment you enter this park, you are immersed in its storytelling. And honestly, I would suggest just spending some time walking around this park and enjoying the immersion. And you don't even have to wait in line for that. People are like full on cosplaying and it's not a party. Because in the States, you have to be at a party to be able to dress up right. that fully. We found out that this is actually normal and totally fine during September and October. They don't have Halloween parties, so they're free to wear their costumes all day. This is definitely something you don't have to wait in line for, but you should definitely people watch and observe because these people go all out. It is insane. And that brings us to attractions. Now, something you need to be aware of is the Japanese are not afraid to wait in a line or wait for a parade. Like the parade isn't until two o'clock today. It's currently like 10 o'clock and people are already queued up. The lines at Tokyo Disneyland can get very long, especially for the newer, more popular attractions. But that being said, there are some that are definitely worth the wait. Even some that you are familiar with that are normal for us in the American parks. Starting off with Big Thunder Mountain. This version is actually a combination of the Florida and Californian rides, as well as a unique ending to the ride. So it's definitely worth visiting, even if you've already experienced those in the US parks. When you're waiting in line, be sure to wave at the people in the cars, because they'll wave back sometimes. And people just love waving in, in Japan, and I love that. Let's normalize waving at people in America. <laughs> yes, Luke, we totally should. On a scale of whether to wait in line for this one or not, I think that's probably a eight out of 10, because it is different than the US parks. Next up is Pooh's Honey Hunt, which, although it has the similar name and attraction stylings as the rest of the world, it really shouldn't be mentioned in the same breath. It is honestly so immersive, and the trackless ride system is incredible. There's some scenes with Tigger where you're actually bouncing along with Tigger. There's a part in the Huffalump scene where you're actually interacting with another car that has characters in it. When you get off this ride, you'll just be smiling from ear to ear and wanna jump right back in line to do it again. It's that good. So 10 out of 10, you want to wait in line for this one. The next ride I want to talk about is also a dark ride with animatronics that I think is the best in the world. So I know I just said that about Pooh, but it goes for this one too. The Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast was our most anticipated ride coming to Tokyo Disneyland. And I have to say it lived up to the hype. It is amazing and definitely worth your time to wait in line. These lines can get very long. You can also purchase a fast pass, but be sure to do that early in the day for your chance to receive a ride time. Otherwise they do sell out. I got chills just watching it's animatronics. A it's a pre-show and I'm, I'm like shook it. That being said, I do recommend standing in the queue because the queue is absolutely amazing. I'm not gonna show it here, but there are some surprises in the ride um, and really cool special effects. So try to avoid watching any ride throughs before you attend this park because the surprises are that much more meaningful and surprising and exciting. So 10 out of 10, definitely wait in this line. The thing about this ride is everything feels like a dance, which is what they designed it to be like. So every scene feels like a dance, but they leave you in every scene so long that it feels like you're able to see a lot of it. Like you don't yeah. feel like you're missing stuff. Or like you're rushing through it. Yeah. Or rush you're yeah. not rushing through this one. And it's so satisfying. Yes. It makes you feel so... 
That was worth every minute we waited for it. Every minute. And it was a long wait, so. Next up, we have Haunted Mansion, which had the Christmas overlay from The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I think, as I have never ridden the Christmas overlay before in California, this is amazing. And I think these, based on ride-throughs that I've seen of the California park, way better. But I don't know. Maybe it's the same. I could be wrong. I've never seen it. It's a heavy overlay. Like, not one scene is untouched. And the animatronics that they use throughout the entire attraction are amazing. But I think my favorite is the Jack Skellington when you're going into the graveyard. And then these, like, snow angel jack-o'-lanterns that are, like, at the end. I don't know. They're so cool. I definitely think it's worth the wait, especially for the Christmas overlay. And probably for the regular version as well. Tokyo Disneyland doesn't play around with their animatronics. They are amazing. So, 8.5 out of 10. Another ride there that I was kind of surprised I was glad that we rode was Pirates of the Caribbean. It's definitely not something you want to bypass because it is actually almost identical to the California version. So if you've only experienced it in Florida, you definitely need to experience it in Tokyo because it is longer, it's more detailed, and it is beautiful. Their animatronics, again, are not playing around, so they have an incredible immersive experience from start to finish. And it's one that people do bypass a lot. The wait times for this one were not that long, so it's definitely worth the wait. Now, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but I do think the teacups can be passed. It's the exact same thing everywhere in the world because you just spin around as much as you want. So if that's your thing, do it. If not, definitely something you can pass on. Another ride here that is hit or miss for most is Baymax. Now, for Luke and I, this was our favorite ride at Disney. We're going to make a video about it exclusively because we love it so much. <laughs> That being said, I am aware that not everyone will enjoy this type of ride. It's the exact same ride concept as Alien Soaring Saucers, but with an added dance element. There's like seven songs in its rotation, and they all have a dance. While you stand in line, you can learn the dances and do them along with it, creating a sense of community, which we absolutely adored. Very easy, very... Approachable. It's very approachable, but it is a unique experience. There's little differences to the dance, and so you have to watch your operator to see what, what the dance is, and you have to learn it real fast. As dancers ourselves, we loved it. Like, loved it. Yeah! While making this video, I'm looking at a list of the Tokyo Disney Resort attractions, and I'm realizing I missed a bunch. We didn't get to see everything, so which is okay. We were only there for two days at each park, and we're gonna miss stuff. So these were just the attractions that we got to experience or the ones we were thinking about. But if you have a favorite attraction that we didn't get to see, definitely leave those in the comments below. And next time we're there, we'll hit them up. Next up, shows, entertainment, and parades. Honestly, some of my favorite things at Disney parks. And I think Tokyo does them so well. It is challenging. The very first day we were there, we were trying to focus on attractions. The second day we were there, we were focusing on shows. The biggest challenge is that everybody loves the shows, which is great, except when you're trying to get a lot in in a day. We tried to use the in-app reservation system specifically for shows, and although it worked one time for us, it didn't seem to work the rest of the time. There are paid options, but even then, there was one show we tried to pay for, but we were too late. It was sold out. So we found out that you could just walk up to most of them, either a parade, a show, or entertainment last minute, like right before it starts, and generally be able to have access to see the show. So it's not really that important. I just thought it was worth mentioning. First off, let's talk parades. People will wait all day to watch the parades. So here in Tokyo, they uh, queue up very early for the parades. So it's about 30 minutes pre-parade, and there's pretty much tons and tons and tons of people lined up all, all along the parade route. Um, we've sat kind of three rows back, um, and that's a pretty good spot. I do think that the parades are some of the best in the world, especially post-COVID. We in America have had trouble getting any parade dancers back, and they spare no expense in Tokyo for dancers. They have so many, and I love it. We started off by watching Harmony of Color, which is their kind of 40th celebration parade. And I gotta say, the music is a bop. The parade is a bop. I cannot recommend you watch this enough. We gave ourselves a 30-minute window to kind of go sit and get ready for the parade, and that seemed like an adequate amount of time. One thing to be aware of when you're watching a parade in Japan is you will probably be sitting down. 
Um, if you are close to the front, you will always be sitting. And really the only people standing are the ones at the very back or people that are walking past. In Japan, it's very common to respect other people. So say you're filming the parade, you have to keep your hands below your eyes just for the courtesy of those behind you. Same with standing, you're gonna definitely sit so that the person behind you can see. And it's just something that's very cultural to the Japanese to be respectful of one another. And I really appreciated that. The next parade we experienced was the Halloween parade. And although this was probably my second favorite parade that we got, to, oh man, it's so hard to rate them because they were all so good. But the Halloween parade was a blast. They had about 100 dancers that led the parade, and they were all dressed in different outfits. And at first, I was like, they're just walking. Like, what, why are they here? But then the floats come behind them, and they're all themed after different attractions. And then when the music swells, they'll run back to the attraction that matches their costume, and then they dance with the audience. The custodian, before the parade even got to us, taught us the dance that they were going to do, and so we could do it with them which was so much fun. It brought in that audience participation that was just a blast to be able to participate and enjoy the parade and be active at the same time. And I love a good audience participation moment. So it was right up my alley. I will have to say, if I saw that parade again, I probably would stand in the back so that I could be a little bit more active. When you're sitting kind of toward the front, it's really hard to get your arms up and moving around because you're really close to other people. So it's it would have been nice to be back in the back where it was a little bit more spread out. A really random thing that I actually don't know how to tell you how to access because it's just kind of a pop-up thing that happens is that they will play the Harmony of Color sound on this little speaker and they have these little pop-up parties and they'll teach you like a little dance and we strolled past it and we're just immediately absorbed by it because it was so cute. But they taught a little dance and then they have these little streamers that you could like dance under and they said happy Halloween to us and it was so cute. Happy Halloween! We did see it happening multiple times like we would catch the end of it. So I know it pops up in different lands around the park throughout the day. I just don't know when. Next up, I want to talk about Mickey's Magical Music World. This show, I have to tell you right now, is like Broadway level show. And it is amazing. They kind of go through a bunch of different IP, a bunch of different characters. And some people come out and just say hi for a second. Some people have plot points. There's this massive, massive ship that is like Ursula. And it's so cool. I think that this is something that everybody should experience. It's so nostalgic. Such great music. Definitely something you don't want to miss. And it wasn't very full when we went. Okay, so hot take. This next parade is the Electric Parade Dreamlights, which is similar to the Electric Lights Parade that was one of the original parades at Disneyland. And I saw that parade in California and did not like it. So I didn't think I was even going to wait around for this parade. But our friend Tracy, who was with us, convinced us to stay and watch it and it was mind-blowing it is way bigger than the parade in california it is f just beautiful it way more floats so much fun they do such a good job incorporating the vintage aspects of the parade but adding new elements and new characters to that parade definitely something to stake out and watch from a good seat Lastly on our list of entertainment, we have the fireworks, sky full of colors. Most everything at the Tokyo Disney Resort is immaculate, and the fireworks are good, they're just not anything to write home about. They do have some great musicality, it, it goes off with the music, but there isn't any projections, the lights on the castle change a little bit, but for the most part, it's not something you need to stay for. And it's also a shared fireworks show to their partner gate, which is the Tokyo Disney Sea. So, kind of a little Easter egg there, but you can see it from either park. Tokyo has an ongoing rotation of parades, shows, and entertainment. Check the app to see what's available during your visit. So let's talk about food. The first and most important thing for me is coffee. <laughs> That's how I feel like coffee. And I have to say, Tokyo Disney coffee is about a 6 out of 10. That being said, it was our single most purchased item in the parks. Like, we had coffee in our hand pretty much the entire time. Also, just something to be aware of, there is no Starbucks on property. This Mickey life ring bao bun had Japanese brown curry in the ears and like a sausage on the inner ring. It was very good. I think it's like an 8.5 out of 10 for me. Very good. This unigiri sandwich though, that's a 10 out of 10 for me. It had like fried unigiri rice as the bun. And then like, I think it was pork on the inside. I actually can't remember. I just remember it being so good. I mean, you'll see it right here. Luke's gonna start dancing. I told you, he starts dancing. If you know anything about the Japanese parks, I think you probably know about these. These are little mochi aliens. They've got a strawberry, a vanilla, and a chocolate innard. Strawberry's my favorite. And these are dangerous. Careful, careful, on my dance. 
Let's go there and film it. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, let's go. See. I'll show you the inside of the restaurant. It's cute. Did they have coffee there? <laughs> you can get the alien mochis in both parks at the Tokyo Disney Resort um, and quite a few different places around the park. But you just look at your app, it'll tell you where you can find these. This restaurant is in Tomorrowland and it is so cute. There's this little show that you can watch with animatronics. Definitely recommend standing around and watching it because it's really precious. Over at the Sweetheart Cafe, we got a Mike Wazowski melon bread as well as a brownie. Um, I do have to say the Mike Wazowski melon bread is iconic of the Tokyo Resort, and it is iconic for a reason. It is so good. Like the this steam, is like the, just like bow. Yeah. Steamed on the outside. Steam. Now the brownie, on the other hand, which was just kind of a last minute like impulsive purchase, was not good. So I wouldn't get the brownie from here. But this lemon sparkling water was very good. It's got a little bit of like egg. You no, know, it's like a potato salad and then ham. Ooh. And these are like a pickled um, carrot. I love those buns. I don't know if this is... Nuts? Yeah, it's almonds. Good, I'm allergic to walnuts, so... Also, the vending machines here are, are iconic. We were waiting till after the show to get dinner, so we rushed over here. We didn't realize they closed early. But it's okay. It's real cute. I know we missed a lot of food on this trip, but maybe next time we'll get more food. Another thing not to skip in Japan is definitely the merchandise. This is the most unique merchandise we've ever seen at a Disney park, and it is bonkers. Japan goes through a high, high, high amount of merchandise. Therefore, it is kind of constantly changing. They don't normally have things for very long, so if you see something online, you may not be able to find it when you get there. It's important to also check the lands. So if you go to Tomorrowland, if you go to Adventureland, if you go to the small provincial village where Bell's Castle is, they are gonna have more unique merchandise depending on where you're at in the park. Paul, don't look. What? You can't see it. You can't see it. <gasps> You may not, you will never get it home. It's so cute. I want everything back. One thing that had a huge impact on us at the parks was the cast. There was so many moments where they made our trip incredibly magical. When I was buying this, he was like, oh, what's your name? I said, Paul, thinking it was for like a receipt or something, I don't know. And he wrote it in Japanese, my name in Japanese. And then Luke came over and he wrote Luke's name in Japanese for us. Cast member remembered us the other day. And she gave us these, they got a little Baymax drawing on them. Ah! into town we uh bought some shirts and the the cashier gave us this but what they are you tear these each little like triangle off and you can give it to somebody one side is english and one side is in japanese so you can give it to a cast member or a person that you think is doing what wonderful or did something nice for you so you can have these and like i was thinking about with some of the cosplayers saying you're awesome or you're fantastic it's just kind of a cute way of like boosting morale i love it and we got to give them to other guests other cast members it was honestly so special. Just like they had added magic into our lives, we were able to add a little bit of magic back into theirs. And that's our thoughts on Tokyo Disneyland. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you in another video real soon. Don't die, okay, bye. And if you wanna see some more of us on Baymax, you can stick around. I love this, the line of this ride is my favorite thing ever. After we rode the ride, we weren't quite done yet, so we just stood on the side and did the dances with everyone, and we just had so much fun. It was like my favorite thing. Ever. And there's other people who do that, it's not just us. Yeah, <laughs> there's some people that don't ride the ride at all, they just dance on the side. And they know what's coming next. Come to Tokyo and ride Baymax and just have so much fun <laughs> in the line.